Hello and welcome to Podcast.init, the podcast about Python and the people who make it great. I would like to thank everyone who supports us on Patreon. Your contributions help to make the show sustainable. When you're ready to launch your next project, you'll need somewhere to deploy it, so you should check out Linode at www.podcastinit.com slash Linode and get a $20 credit to try out their fast and reliable Linux virtual servers for running your app or experimenting with something that you hear about on the show. You can visit the site at www.podcastinit.com to subscribe to the show, sign up for the newsletter, read the show notes, and get in touch. To help other people find the show, please leave a review on iTunes or Google Play Music, tell your friends and coworkers, and share it on social media. Your host as usual is Tobias Macy, and today I'm interviewing Henry Senyondo about Data Retriever, the package manager for public datasets. So Henry, could you please introduce yourself? My name is Henry Senyondo, and I'm a software developer at the Wicology Lab at the University of Florida. I maintain the data retriever and a few packages that wrap around the data retriever. And do you remember how you first got introduced to Python? I was first introduced to Python when I was doing my graduate school at KAIST, that is in South Korea. I was uh, in the natural language processing lab and we did a few scripts to clean up data and to annotate data. The best way was to use Python. And after that, I worked for LG for one year where I did uh, voice recognition and uh, for the smart TV. And I used a lot of uh, Python for scripting. And could you briefly explain what Data Retriever is and how you got first got involved with the project? The Data Retriever is a data management platform. It enhances research productivity. Our researchers go through a lot of time. They use a lot of time trying to clean up, standardize, and collect, sometimes even search for data sets. If we could reduce the amount of time scientists get to clean up this data and standardize it, they could use more time to focus on research so as to come up with the cool solutions to most of the problems that we have. We came up with this idea to reduce this amount of time by creating a platform that could use data sets that are publicly available clean them, standardize them, and get them ready for analysis. The data retriever is written in Python, and it has a few other libraries that wrap around it, like the R package, um, and uh, we're building a Julia package. Most people are going to be familiar with package managers from their operating system or for from the Python package repository or other languages. So what are the sort of similarities and in what ways does it diverge having to manage data from a package management perspective? So package management is that kind of uh, system that helps us to reduce the amount of time to install packages, right? So the data retriever also kind of comes in in the field of data science because a lot of this data is uploaded or is supplied to the public in its raw form. Most of this data has a lot of uh, errors. It has a lot of abnormalities. And we come up and say, okay, the data retriever with one line of code could help you as a pocket manager by searching the data for you. It looks up the information of the data set, you could read through the information and tells you which data set you could actually use for your analysis. With one line of code, you could get this uh, data onto your systems. It um, supports various database management systems because we want we know that you want to keep your data in a Postgres data management system or a SQLite management system. So any database, we support a few of the database management systems. You could easily install that data in its clean version and ready to analyze into those systems. And one of the things that's often difficult with software packages is you know, the, the secondary and tertiary dependencies that need to be installed as part of that. But from, from reading through the documentation, it looks like that's not really something that leaks into the data retriever situation because you're just dealing with single sets of data and not necessarily having to pull in dependent information to enrich that data. Is that correct? That is correct to... Uh, a certain point because the data retriever also uses other libraries. So the data retrievers, Python has got this uh, awesome packaging management system whereby you could um, describe the date, the requirements, the required dependencies for the retriever that are going to enable us to pre-process data. For example, the JSON engine, MySQL engine, Postgres engine, all these engines have certain drivers that the retriever depends on. So we have to make sure that these APIs are also working perfectly or these dependencies are working perfectly. 
And are there limitations as to the kinds of data sets that can be packaged and installed by a data retriever? So currently we handle tabular data. Tabular data is delimited data. And then we also handle spatial data. But And these are the main data sets that we're looking at, spatial or tabular data. However, when we talk about the scalability, when it comes to tabular data, we've handled most of the processes needed for a clean data set to be analyzed. For the spatial data, there are lots of pre-processing that are taking on. There are lots of developments that are taking on in the spatial environment, and we're trying to scale that up to a, a, a good uh, amount of uh, pre-processing. When it comes to the domain, we basically handle various domains of data sets. Initially, we started with um, ecological data sets, but currently we support all data sets. As long as it's a data set and it's uh, defined clearly by a given standard, the retriever will uh, install that data set for you in the specified engine or in the specified data database management system. And are the majority of the data sets that are currently packaged by data retriever within a certain bound in terms of their size? And what are some of the challenges with the data sets as they start to grow beyond a certain point? The challenge is uh, speed. Uh, we do have uh, some engines that work optimally with that. Um, as data sets get larger, obviously the time required to download them and install them becomes larger. But uh, currently we are really performing at a good uh, optimal standard. And are the target systems generally people's individual laptops or desktop computers, or do you also have data sets that are targeting a more distributed or larger compute cluster for being able to analyze the information? Um, so here we, at this point, I think we're talking about the size. And most data sets are not that huge, but the data retriever is size independent. It could handle any size as long as your laptop or your computing machine can handle that. And as long as they're providing it because it's just a pipeline. And uh, with the pipeline, there is uh, we have designed it to have no limit because we're not treating all the data sets in memory. And for somebody who is working on building a set of scripts or the preparation involved in installing a data set, what are the steps involved? And from what I was reading too, it looks like you're using a standardized data format for actually simplifying that process. Yeah, so the concept of standardization is very crucial in this aspect of um, using data sets. If we have two researchers who use different standards of labeling or categorizing or defining their data sets, then we shall have a difficulty when it comes to reusing these data sets. Luckily, the Open Knowledge Foundation have created a data specification for data packages. This helps us to standardize how you describe your data. With this specification, people can plug in your data to most of their uh, products or software. And uh, with that help, if you have a JSON package, uh, uh, basically the packages are in JSON format. And if you have described your JSON data package clearly, the data retriever will take in this um, data package in its raw form. However, there are data sets that we need further pre-processing, right? And these data sets, we actually create different kinds of files to support, support this pre-processing. So we create Python files from the specified descriptions of the data package. We do some further pre-processing and then you, the tool is ready, uh, the data set is ready to be used. When I was reading through the documentation, and as you mentioned, there's the R and the Julia wrappers around data retriever. So I'm curious how much of the logic is contained within the Python library and how much of it needs to be shared between those additional language implementations? So we have the core functionalities developed in the data retriever in the Python software in the Python tool. And most all these packages, we have the R data pack, R data retriever which is wrapping around the core library, the core API or the data retriever in Python. Then we also developing a Julia wrapper. All these are wrappers and they're trying to wrap around the core functionalities of the data retriever. 
So I'm wondering if you can dig into how the project is actually designed and the ways that it will parse the specification for how the data is intended to be installed and how you're able to support multiple different destination targets for the source data. So we use basically uh, most of the uh, programming design patterns like composition and inheritance. And we have uh, engines, right? And these are specifications for how engines are supposed to pre-process it, pre-process the data. So the engines are kind of like plugins. You have an engine that you want to support, we can easily plug it in uh, because we change a few specifications. Then we have the core pack, which is the main class that that handles all these engines that we describes their s- schemas, right? Then. We have the modules, the scripts, basically. From uh, the scripts, we also have a definition of what the scripts contain, and that's kind of populated from the JSON data package. So the JSON data package populates the script class, and the script classes communicate with the main core part, and they define where where to install the data set, which engine to install the data set. So if a user comes in and plugs in a new JSON package, that JSON package is transformed, is read and initiated into the scripts class. The scripts class communicates with the core platform and uh, based on the specified engine, we use the, the the specified, sorry, if a user plugs in his JSON data package, the data package is initial initialized or initiated as a script. The script then communicates with the core part of the retriever, which determines the engine that is supposed to be used. And at that moment, it defines the kind of schema that is used for that kind of engine. If it's Postgres or MySQL or SQLite, they both, they all have different schemas. So that's the part, uh, that's how the the whole engine is, the whole software is set up. What have been some of the most difficult aspects of building and maintaining Data Retriever? So most of the complexity comes in with supporting various platforms because we have to support people who are using Mac. We have to support people who are using Windows. We have to support people who are using um, Linux and other operating systems. Uh, But on top of that, we have also system or Python dependencies or um, whereby somebody is using maybe a Python 3 program or a Python 2 program. And all these systems, all these systems process data differently or they, they, they function differently. And we also have complexities when we are trying to support backward compatibility because um, when we release a software, many things have changed and we need to keep our users who are using the previous software functional. And then the other problem that or complexity that we have always found is uh, dependencies, keeping up with dependencies because people always update their dependence versions and uh, their functionality. And this usually breaks down most of the of the of the tool. And um, I think those are the main problems that we face. And is there a sizable community around Data Retriever or is it still in the growth phase where you're trying to get people interested in it and engaged in contributing new data sets to sort of grow the overall utility of it? Yeah, I have had quite a few people tell me they've tried the tool at a few of the conferences that I've been to. We're still developing. We trying to enable more data sets. We're trying to get users to see the benefits of using the data retriever and we're also enhancing it by putting more functionality putting more uh, scaling up the special pre-processing and i think um within i think after some time people are going to come up on come on board and um, use the data retriever more often what are some of the features that you have planned for the future that you're hoping to implement so we are trying to include what we call the data weaver so this is a tool that uh, would help in integrating most of the data sets because most of the researchers don't use the same data sets 
or individual data sets. They try to use data sets from other researchers and integrate these data sets to come up with a new data set. And we're developing uh, that tool. Then we're also developing a Julia package for the, the retriever so as to also support people who are using other programming languages. And uh, we are trying to, I think uh, right now that's uh, that's all that uh, is that is going to be updated soon. When you were originally starting the project, was Python the only language that you considered implementing it in, or were you looking at other possibilities as well? So Python is one of those very, very important languages when it comes to data science. It's one of those languages that processes data very fast. So there are other options when developing this tool, but given the given the environment that we're trying to solve python is really really important and uh we, we i think that's the best choice that we made okay uh for anybody who is interested in learning more about data retriever and following the work that you're up to i'll have you add your preferred contact information to the show note and so with that i'll move us to the picks and for my pick, I'm going to choose a Bluetooth receiver that I picked up a little while ago for using to listen to podcasts while I'm commuting and a set of headphones that I got to go with it. So I was looking at some of the different Bluetooth receivers available and some of the ones that are built to clip onto your shirt or whatever and ended up finding this one that was a little cheaper than most of those and supported newer versions of the spec and the only problem was that it was designed for use in cars, but I also found a little pocket clip that fits nicely onto it so I can just clip it to my shirt while I'm commuting. Uh, so I'll add links to all those in the show notes. And with that, I'll pass it to you. Do you have any picks for us this week, Henry? So the pick for the listeners is a movie from India that I always watch. I watched it last weekend and it's called The Three Idiots. I hope you enjoy that movie. Okay, great. Well, I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to tell me about the work you're doing with Data Retriever. Uh, definitely seems like a very valuable addition to the scientific community, and I look forward to seeing where you take it in the future. Thank you very much, and thank you for the time. Yeah, have a great night.